Hi, everyone. I am here with two amazing people. Melanie DeRigo, a current congressional candidate running to represent New York's third congressional district and longtime friend of the show, Namiki Konst, also also the host of her own show, The Namiki Show. Uh, thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Really excited. Uh, okay. I've talked to a lot of candidates and they all have their sets of issues. Uh, we're, we're not talking about people who have a very luxurious life. We're talking about working class people who run for Congress that come on my show. And what a lot of my viewers don't realize is that they're still working full time jobs. They still have families and it's really, really tough. So organizations like uh, Matriarch, for example, they help these candidates with financial support, institutional support, training support. And that is really crucial because to just do this on your own when you have a limited amount of resources is very tough. So we're going to talk about Matriarch today. But really what I want to let people know is if you are running for Congress or considering running for Congress, we've got you covered in this video right here. So I want to go to Melanie because Melanie is just a normal person. Melanie has no connections to wealthy people. She doesn't have her own independent wealth. So running for Congress is one thing, but when you actually run for Congress, it's an entirely different game. And you've basically been running now for multiple years because you ran in 2020, you're running again. So talk through just how difficult it is to maintain a viable campaign, but also not go crazy, also have a life. Well, uh, yes, um, you know, your life really does become the campaign. Um, so I think it's really important that the folks you surround yourself with, whether they're staffers, volunteers, they, they sort of become your extended family, um, you know, not sugarcoating it. It is a seven day a week, um, 10 hours if you're lucky, more like 14 hours a day type of job. Uh, and, and it's nonstop, you know, so you, you have to have a significant work ethic. And I think you have to really remember the reasons you decided to run because it'll test you in ways you cannot possibly imagine. Uh, that being said, it's all worth it, right? Because in the end, we're pushing for change and we're inspiring others and we're growing our movement each and every day. So but it is it's, you know, it's it's definitely a commitment. And one thing that I really wanted to ask you both about is when you're running for Congress for the first time, a lot of people have no idea where to begin. Um, Isaiah James, for example, he's come on my program before. He said that he literally Googled, how do I run for Congress? Because for people who are just normal working class citizens, there's there's no support provided to you. Like a lot of times these establishment wealthy people who, who are running for Congress, they kind of get poached. You know, they are sought after but if you're running uh because you want to oftentimes you don't know there's a lot of barriers so namiki where do you even begin like what's step number one if you think i might want to run for congress this is i get this question multiple times a week and i'm i'm really happy you asked this because one of the aspects of matriarch and and it's it's important i think it 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 it's, it's unique to our organization, but it shouldn't be unique. I think that other progressive organizations out there should really lean in on the class-related issues because if we want a Congress that is really representing the progressive issues that we all vie for, we need people who have that background and we need to address the systemic issues and the barriers that are faced when you come from the working class. Um, what is working class? I mean, we all, we're all working class, unless you're, you're, you're in the upper echelons at this point. Income inequality is so vast that there's barely any middle class left. We're all workers and we're all, you know, in, in this in this we're cogs in this machine of, of monopolies and, you know, Bezos and Elon Musk's and, you know, Starbucks. And that's why we're seeing so many strikes and, and organizing efforts across the country. So when you say what is the first step to running for office, I think it's that fire in the belly. I think I think it's you know, I'm really feeling angry about what's happening in my community. I've been active in different ways, whether it's in a union, you know, union effort uh, as a Starbucks worker or in Bessemer, Alabama as an Amazon worker, or you're on strike as a coal miner. You know, these are the issues that most Americans are facing right now. And you don't have to. You could be a teacher who's who's upset that the budget has, you know, kept getting reduced and that salaries haven't gone up and that classes are, are extremely large and you don't have the resources to provide, to provide to the children. And of course the pandemic is a whole other set of issues. Um, these issues are obviously talked about a lot in media and in the progressive movement and on Capitol Hill. But when I was watching what was happening during the pandemic, how everybody was talking about frontline workers and then seeing what was delivered that would really get to 
they're making their lives better. Forget about just a Band-Aid, like fixing what happened during the pandemic, you know, making lives go back to where they were pre-pandemic, which was not great. That's when we at Matriarch realized we have to lean in even further on the working class aspect. There's been so mm-hmm. many other um, uh, reports that show that 100% of the people who were affected during the pandemic were working class women. 100, mm-hmm. not 99%, 100%. That number should be on every single congressional member's desk, every single state lawmaker's desk, every school board member's desk. They should feel that in their bones. And so, you know, when people say, how do I run for, what's the first thing to do? Well, Matrix has decided we're doing this massive training. Uh, As Melanie knows, she was one of our candidates in 2020, our pandemic candidates. Uh, (laughs) Very tough race (laughs) to be in. Yeah. A A lot of crises that popped up. Um, but we we learned through that that there is an opportunity to create a basis of knowledge for anybody who's currently running or thinking about running in 2022, not just congressional anymore. We're, we're broadening out to um, uh, all the way down ballot from school board to congressional to Senate. That's board. great. And, and that's really to provide um, the training for how you basically run for Congress or for office, excuse me. But also on top of it, there's a whole other set of issues that working class candidates face in getting to viability, meaning like you're going to get all the big endorsements. You know, there's there's a lot of challenges along the way that progressives and working class people face that the establishment doesn't or rich candidates don't. And I'm sure, you know, Melanie can speak to a lot of that. But we're going to be addressing those in the training as well. A lot of things we've learned over the last few years with so many progressives running. Yeah, I wanted to ask Melanie because, um, you know, A lot of people don't realize that, you know, you see these really great candidates, some candidates who are phenomenal, but their campaigns consistently like they're underwater. You know, you you launch a campaign and you have a good message. uh, But the problem is that, you know, you're you're working too much at your normal job. So, you know, you're you're kind of stretching yourself too thin and you have to quit uh, the campaign or, you know, you are putting in all this work. But ultimately, you know, you're not going to win because you're just not raising enough money because you can't dedicate resources. So just like running for Congress, like what's the, what do you think is the one thing that people just don't understand about this? And uh, like I always say, it's a self-sacrifice, but like put it into perspective, because I don't think I would ever want to do it after hearing from all of you, you candidates. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, look, I, I don't think that there is a broad understanding at what it costs to run for Congress and uh, you know, as particularly for working class people, and I'm just talking about, I mean, it co- there's a big cost, but the financial mm-hmm. cost is huge for working class folks. You know, um, I think that the majority of voters who aren't really engaged don't realize that when, you know, a multimillionaire runs for Congress, they're really, you know, in, in an entirely different demographic, and they're going to then legislate from that perspective, which is, you know, m- most of Congress today. Um, I I think, you know, I'm a big supporter for publicly funded elections at the federal, Mm -hmm. at all levels. I think this, that would be a really great equalizer. And I think it would really help us shift the balance of power, something that I know Matriarch understands really well, uh, which is why they are so wonderful with the resources that they bring to working class candidates. Um, But uh, until that happens, I do think we need to normalize giving. And, And this is something that, you know, 15 years ago, I had no idea about I, I just I it was not so I, that wasn't where I was in my life. And I, I didn't think I was part of that donor class. And the reality is that we're all part of it. You know, if we all mm-hmm. want to say if we all gave $5, imagine what that would look like, we could actually yeah. rep, we, could, we could elect candidates that represented us, right? Because mm-hmm. I mean, it is it is not easy. I mean, to be competitive, you have to raise close to a million dollars. And, and that is very difficult when you are a grassroots candidate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and one thing that I wanted you to touch on, Namiki, is uh, this um, problem of reaching parity in Congress. Uh, there's still way, way more men in Congress than there are women, and they are disproportionately writing legislation that affects women. I mean, look at Texas, for example, banning abortion. So I've always been of the mindset that we have to increase representation of women. But there's a really clear difference between descriptive representation and substantive representation. So descriptive mm-hmm. representation means we just get 50 percent women, 50 percent men. In and of itself, that's important. But what we really strive for is substantive representation. And Matriarch is the only organization organization that actually pushes this because there's a difference between getting in another rich woman who's just going to legislate the same way that like the rich straight white men have been legislating and 
okay, I mean, sure, we've aesthetically made a difference, but you're not substantively changing it. So the emphasis that Matriarch really puts on these candidates is we want working class women, people who don't get recruited, people who don't have independent wealth that they can use to kind of just fuel their own campaign. Uh, talk about why that's so important, uh, because I think that a lot of people, given how the Democratic Party tries to weaponize identity politics, for lack of a better word, they kind of hear, oh, well, we need more women in Congress. They, they hear that and they dismiss it. But it yeah. really is crucial, especially in modern politics going forward. So, yeah, talk through that, because it's it's something that I think people need to think more deeply about. I'm so happy you say this because this is something um, I, you know, we face it sometimes. And I think mm -hmm. myself in the media, when I talk about it, I'm, I get a lot of comments from people, but mostly supportive. But, you know, this is a systemic issue and right. systems exacerbate uh, the conflict between, you know, I don't think that that we look at a lot of marginalized communities. I think we're, we've evolved to understand the systemic issues that a lot of marginalized communities face. But women, we're still we're still not there yet. Um, and part of that is because. You know, many white women of privilege have been part of the patriarchy, the capitalist patriarchy. I, I don't think it was conscious. I think sometimes it's for, for survival. And I would never, ever, ever blame those women. And so, you know, I want to make it very, very clear that when we talk about capitalism and this extreme form of late stage capitalism, it is a very patriarchal uh, mindset. And, yeah. you know, let's just start with the fact that, uh, you know, the people who the Treasury, the Fed, uh, CEOs of most corporations, uh, the list of billionaires in the world, uh, you know, most of them are men, most of them are white men, and they have been for a really long time. There are always going to be some exceptions here or there. But as long as you're in the system, the power structures that are dictated by these people it's going to determine how things are operated, what issues are brought to the table, what you're willing to leverage to get another issue. We're so lucky right now that we have a group in the squad of strong and progressive caucus of strong feminists from the working class who understand what it means on a personal level. Corey Bush uh, was in the class with Melanie and Corey is one of our founding members. You know, one of the first things she did when she got to Congress was say, you know, let's let's boot these these like January 6th. Uh, terrorists from Congress, uh, or let's censure them at least. And then she, you know, of course, did an, an incredible housing demonstration on the steps of the Capitol that moved uh, Joe Biden to actually doing something. She was owning her power. She was owning her experience. But until you can change the power structure of Congress, of state legislatures, you know, what that does when you have more working class women determining the power structure, it actually urges other women that may not necessarily be from that background to operate from that mindset because they're conditioned by the, the conditions that we all, uh, you know, grow up in. Mm -hmm. But what we really believe and the pathway to getting there, because that's that's the end goal, right? Or that's the mid goal, I guess you could say. Um, the, 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 the beginning process is, you know, the Democrats, I think all of us understand the Democrats have completely ignored most of the country. They've said, uh, unless it's a winnable race in our mind, based on our, you know, whatever analysis, uh, we're not putting any, any energy there. We're not putting money into state parties anymore. They've been doing this now for 15 years, putting no money into state parties and local parties. And of course, that happened as the Koch brothers decided, oh, great opportunity. We're going to go in there and we're going to recruit all the way down the college level. And they've taken over state legislatures and they've passed, you know, everything from uh, restrictive uh, reproductive rights laws to, of course, defunding education and and taking on unions, which is a big organizing mechanism for the party. So the Democrats have completely or uh, ignored parts of the country so that we think that we can't win some of these parts of the country. This is all while they support rich candidates. Well, we believe that, yeah, it's great to challenge bad Democrats, as, as Melanie has been doing. And, like, let's just reiterate, Melanie has been running against one of the worst Democrats in the Democratic Party. And it would be great to see more progressive organizations backing her effort. Uh, because he is of areas in the country that are Republican that used to be Democrat, not 20 years ago, five years ago. And even though they might be R plus 15 based on a Cook score, five years ago, they were, you know, a Democrat. Kathy Hochul's district, who's our governor of New York, that is an R plus 16 district. A Republican uh, is, the, is the member there. Kathy Hochul was the congressional member less than a decade ago. So we know Democrats mm. can win there. And we really believe, because this is where the Starbucks workers are organizing, don't forget. We really believe 
that it's the working class women who can win in those districts because, you know, the average person in, in that district is, is making like working class wages. And, and the Democrats have just abandoned it and said, no, we can't win because, you know, a Republican owns it now and it's a rich Republican. Well, we don't believe that. So we are, are willing to go in places that Democrats won't go to make the case. Also important, which is what's happening with Melanie right now, a lot of folks don't understand. It takes a woman at least three times to run before she wins. That's the statistical average. I'm going to guess Jesus. it's a little higher with working class women. So that is why it's yeah. so important for us to have these institutions that have their backs, not just in preparing them to run along the way, but being there for them when the going gets really tough, because unfortunately the attacks are a lot worse against working class women. We see it publicly, mm -hmm. but it's really bad when you don't have the attention of the national media and we want to make sure we have their backs. Yeah. So what I really like that's starting to happen, which is the one thing that possibly breaks me out of this doomer mindset, is the fact that we're all this entire movement is starting to kind of form our own um, alternative establishment, for lack of a better word. I mean, when we think of like these rich candidates, right, they are they, they've got the backing immediately. I mean, me and Melanie talked about this in uh, her interview where it's like, you know, you have this promising candidate who currently is running in, you know, an open race. Of course, more people are going to jump in. Uh, but, you know, why would the Democratic Party establishment reject her? So, so you don't get that institutional report. And in many states, these progressive candidates who are running, they get rejected and fought against by the Democratic Party establishment. So what I see over the last couple of years is this groundswell of new movements forming that have been missing, that have made it very difficult for us to uh, win without. So, for example, you know, DSA. Uh, mm -hmm. providing institutional support, Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, and now Matriarch. So, Melanie, I want you to talk through. So a lot of candidates, they get involved and they feel as if the weight is on their shoulders and they're doing this without no institutional support. How does Matriarch specifically help candidates and why are these types of organizations important for helping your campaign? Yes. Well, I was lucky enough to be chosen as part of the inaugural <laughs> matriarch class. Um, and I will tell you that I would have been lost without matriarch. Um, I can't tell you the amount of late night calls that I would, you know, reach out to know me or, uh, you know, another member of the board with an issue and they were there for me. I, I think one of the elements that is so different and unique about matriarch is that one, they get it, but they invest early in your candidacy and then they do everything they can, whether it's, you know, introducing you to other folks in the movement, helping you expand your coalition, guiding you uh, on whether it's field or comms or, you know, whatever it is, they were there for me. And, um, you know, to your point, Mike, that there is institutional knowledge that you just don't know if you haven't run. And even if you've worked on campaigns, it's a whole other ball game when you're the candidate. So having the opportunity to work with someone like Nomi and know that she had my back as someone who had run for office and could um, not only give me the institutional knowledge and guidance, but also someone who could help me sort out the emotional labor of running for office right. because that's really, you know, that that comes up. It, it just does. It can get very hard. Um, so to have someone in your corner like that is, um, I mean, there's just, I, I, I'm so grateful and, and I, I, you know, I, I just can't thank you enough for that, Nomi. But um, one other thing I will say, because I think Matriarch has done this really well, and, and it, I think it, feed, it builds upon what you were saying, Mike, about creating this movement. And I think, you know, we have work to go in terms of um, building together across all spectrums. But for mm -hmm. the Matriarch family, uh, we've really developed a sisterhood. And that is so important for women and working class women, especially because it does feel lonely when you're running, you know, when you're running for office, you can feel like you're on an island of one. And, and there's so much pressure, especially for grassroots candidates, because it, we are so emotionally invested in pushing and fighting for the change, right? Um, so to know that I could reach out to Corey or one of my other sisters or no man just, you know, say, hey, I'm having this issue or can someone just talk? We, we had meetings where we just we didn't talk about anything with the campaign. We just talked about what was going on inside, you know, and that's, that's important. It's important, but it also helps us build 
um, our, uh, to your point, our own institutional support, because, you know, Matriarch is helping de- not only develop leaders, but create leaders. And um, those folks who then go on can help the next class. And, and I think that's what it is. It's not just a, you know, sometimes we see that there's a candidate that's endorsed, they go off and then that's it. But what I find really special about Matriarch is many of us are really returning um, to see what we can give back to the organization and still learn and grow together. But um, I think over time, this is going to be a very powerful organization that truly will shift the balance of power and help elect more working class women. Yeah. And and what's so different about these types of grassroots organizations is that normal people can just easily reach out to them. Like if you are a corporate Democrat, not like you're not an actual like congressional corporate Democrat. But if you support like centrist Democrats and you want to run for Congress, I mean, and you try to reach out to CAP, for example, you know, Center for American (laughs) Progress or one of these really big firms. They're not going to return your email, but you can reach out to Matriarch. You could tweet at Namiki and you're going to get a response. So the barrier to like uh, just communicate, um, it's not there, you know, so it's accessible. And that's really important. Uh, Namiki, I wanted you to um, talk a little bit more about this event on the 29th and what specifically people can um, can expect what to uh, what to come away with, why this is going to be helpful if they have no idea where to begin or if they're already r- running for Congress, because I have a lot of candidates that I've talked to that I don't think they're associated with matriarch. Uh, but let us know, uh, because I again, I just I, I don't think people know where to begin, but they have the instinct. Maybe I want to get involved and run for Congress. So does this kind of help with that? And so you're trying to raise thirty thousand dollars. What does that uh, what does that go towards? Because the event itself is you're trying to pay for tickets for the candidates. So kind of talk through what this is about, because I think that if something like this happened every single year, honestly, we would as a movement be a lot more successful because, again, like you have to run multiple times. And part of that running multiple times to win is you you know what you did wrong the last time and you correct that. But if we get it right the first time, we increase our chances of success, obviously. So like the more that we have these support systems, the better off we'll be. So I'll, I'll shut up and let Namiki uh, plug this event because I think people really need to know about this and, and consider going if you're if you're watching this as well. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. Like if it, I think this is something that we learned, um, you know, Matriarch launched a little bit later in the cycle, you know, early enough, but a little bit later in the cycle in 2020. And we didn't have time to put together a very comprehensive training. And, you know, it was always on our agenda. And so for the last, you know, I would say year we've been uh, in 2021, we've been preparing for this training. And um, I mean, it's it's turning out to be a pretty fascinating training. We'd wanted to do it in person, but the good news about it not being in person is that we are offering it to as many candidates as possible and their support uh, senior staff because it's, you know, a lot of this oh, stuff- Oh, that's great you know, they would want to learn about too. Um, and we want to do it for free because uh, we are, <laughs> we're supporting working class candidates mm-hmm. and it's it's really important not to spend your money on, on things like this. So we, uh, the, the program is going to cost $30,000 mainly for operational costs. I mean, it's just at the end of the day, like you got to pay for that stuff. Uh, and it is what it is, but we want to have as many candidates as possible. And people who are thinking about running all women, all women uh, of working class background, of course, and they're progressive. And their support staff come. We're going to be addressing the institutional barriers, you know, when to hire consultants, who do you hire, what team members you bring on, at what point do you bring on those team members, how to look out for scam artists. This is a big thing in politics. That's so huge. (laughs) Like these consulting firms will take advantage of you if you don't pick the right one. So like this alone can save you so much money as a candidate. So much. I wish I was kidding. So much money. (laughs) You haven't. No idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when it's, it's, it's for so many progressives, it's small dollar donations that are fueling their campaigns and it takes a long time. Um, you know, so that's one aspect. Uh, there are new tools available that are available only to progressive candidates that we're going to give uh, tutorials on. We're working with some of these companies that offer them to progressives. Uh, how to do rapid response when you're, when you're, you know, women face more attacks than ever. And there, there's a pattern of attacks at different stages yeah. in the campaign and into office. And how do you prepare for that? How do you see it coming? Um, how do you respond to it? When to respond to it? We have someone who's worked very, very closely with a lot of people on this. And it's it's a specialty. And we're just really grateful to have that person join us for the training. Um, uh, you know, how to build a campaign plan. A lot of people don't know. You need a campaign plan to run. And if you don't, like, it's, it comes down to the micro detail. I was lucky enough mm-hmm. to have a team that was, because we had a short election, uh, our campaign plan was everything. And 
you know, I didn't even have a moment to breathe. It was, we were on that plan. <laughs> um, so, you know, and then, and then the sisterhood, the, there's the, there's the, uh, quote unquote spiritual aspect of it, which is how to take care of yourself as a candidate, when to take care of yourself. Um, we want to build that camaraderie that we had in 2020, but expand it outwardly. Uh, we're going to have a few leaders come and speak to us. You know, we're going to have somebody talk about how power moves with women and how to own your power because, you know, whether or not we all see it, when you come in as a confident woman, like people feel that. And, mm -hmm. and that could be for good or bad, by the way. You know, there are people mm -hmm. who are drawn right. to it and love it. And then there are people who have a lot of issues they got to work out and get very, very uh, triggered by it. And, mm -hmm. you know, how do you own and protect your power in your campaign and, and be aware of, of what's happening in every single aspect of your campaign? So it's, it's a completely different type of training. I have been in more trainings than you probably can imagine, as has much <laughs> of our team. Uh, we realized that there were class issues or gender issues that went beyond – some of the stuff that other trainings uh, deal with, some really great stuff that they deal with that we've uh, been inspired by. And then there were just institutional issues, things that have been that have come up in the last you know two cycles that we've learned as a movement. Even these platforms, I know you get this, Mike, the platforms have changed. So much mm -hmm. giving used to come online and it's much more difficult now because the monopolies have limited the ability to for, for, for progressive candidates to raise money online. Uh, and also, you know, there's donor fatigue. It's it's real. It's yeah. not great, but it's real. Um, and there are a lot of candidates running and people are vying for the same resources. So, you know, we, we address all of these things. We try to, you know, we want to work with all the candidates to create a, a good roadmap um, and and prepare them for their races. But but you're right. It's it's going to cost us thirty thousand dollars. So uh, we are reaching out to the 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 larger progressive community to contribute whatever you can. It's just going to operational costs, costs, very transparent about that. Like it is what it is. We have to have the platform for it. We have to have the trainers, you know, be compensated. We have to, uh, of course, you know, get the word out, which is really important. So number one, if you can give whatever, $5, $100, if you can do more, thank you. Um, that, that we have a link for that, that it'll be up. Um, yeah, I'll have it in course, the description actually too. Uh, and then, of course, it's bit.ly slash train women. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you do know a candidate or someone who's working for an amazing woman, woman running for office, congressional all the way down to to local um, state level, uh, please urge them to sign up and urge them to fill out the nomination because nominations for endorsements are open until the end of January, right around the training. Mm -hmm. We are urging all of the candidates who are seeking endorsement to go to this training because, you know, it's valuable. It also makes our work a little bit easier, too. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I'm glad that you, oh, for sure. No, I'm glad you brought up the sisterhood element because I don't think people really uh, understand how important the element of like communication and networking is. It doesn't just make the candidate's life easier, but if you are a comms director, for example, for a grassroots candidate, and you know someone with a connect to someone in media who might be able to interview, that is phenomenal. So for example, I'm working with someone who's working with a campaign that has other connects that have just like kind of brought me other candidates and it's been very easy. I mean, um, you know, if you if you know these people and they have other connections, you can help get your candidate's name out there. And that is gonna make everyone's lives a lot easier. Like oftentimes I'll just like send out a million DMs to different candidates and you know, oftentimes, yeah, I won't get responses or I do, but we can't, you know, come up with dates. But if you just have somebody that's like, hey, I know this person, they, they're a great candidate. They're, you know, progressive. Um, it, it, it just, it makes, networking makes a huge difference. I, I think people really need to know that. And the community, like actually being able to talk to each other about how terrible your day was, you know, for fundraising or this attack that you got from your opponent. It, it's, it makes a huge difference. And I'm, I'm pretending as if like I'm speaking from experience, but I've interviewed enough candidates to where I feel like, all right, you're all stronger than me because I would never do this shit. <laughs> so, I mean, you need these kinds of resources. Like, you need these types of events. This uh, this event reminds me of the, uh, it was like the 2018, I think it was after Brand New Congress launched, they did a candidate boot camp. And I remember that was like AOC's first time and they all like were uh, figuring out the resources and whatnot. I think that these events are really important. And the fact that it's free is really, really crucial. So I'll put the donation link down below. Is there anything that I'm leaving out before we uh, before we go? Support Matriarch. <laughs> yeah, support well, Matriarch. Melanie. Yeah, <laughs> Melanie Dorigo, New York's third congressional district. And folks, like we're all kind of in this together. We're, we're a community. Again, if you don't know where to start, 
You're not alone if you want to run for Congress. Exactly. If you're even thinking about running for Congress, that is incredible. Just kind of know what to expect, though, because it's it's a lot. It's not, you know, it sounds good, but when you start it, it's a whole different ball game. So you need to be prepared if you want to be successful. And we need you to be successful. So, folks, we'll leave that right there. Uh, January 29th, Matriarch training session. Melanie DeRigo running for New York's 3rd Congressional District. Folks, let's kick some ass in 2022. What do you say? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs>